My name's Elaine and I'm one of the Vets and Scratching Post. With me today I've got Steph and Grub. And what we're going to do is look at how to examine your cat's ear at home. This is really important because in examining your cat at home, it means that you're aware of what is normal for your cat. You're aware if there's any changes that occur and therefore when you do go to the vet, you can let them know what you've found. Steph's holding grub for me today and it's just so that we don't lose him off the table if he decides he's had enough. Now the most important thing at any point that you're going to examine your cat is to try and get them to relax as much as possible. Spend five or ten minutes stroking them just to try and get them to relax down. With any animal when you're going to examine it don't immediately jump to the area that you want to examine. Very often you'll take them by surprise and they'll want to back away and it makes it just that wee bit more difficult. So with Grub today, what we're going to do is not start off by going straight to the ears. We're going to just stroke his head and, and stroke down his back as well. Once we've put him at ease, what you're going to do is just support his head and this is how I find it easier. And if you support his head with one hand underneath, it gives you just a wee bit of control to move him back and forward. Now what we're going to do is start with the outside of the ear. We've already assessed the head and can't find anything. And what we have is the ear flap. In Grub's case, he has hair at the base of the ear flap. And as you move up the ear, he loses that hair and it becomes very, very fine. Now that is normal for him. But in some cases, we will see hair loss around the ear tip and around the, the tip of that ear flap. And that's important to note. Now, when you're examining the ear flap, if you work your way around the edge of the ear flap itself, you're looking for any areas where there could be cuts, where there are any bumps or lumps, or just in general, anything that's abnormal. And you can see Grub demonstrates this quite well. The veins that are present under the surface of the ear that will tend to bleed quite heavily if the ear is cut or scratched in a fight at all. So Grub's right ear is absolutely normal. There's nothing that we can find there. So the next stage is to check the inside of that ear flap. And I do this just by grabbing the top of the ear and pushing it out. And again, we can see there's a nice clean surface. There's no abnormalities, there's no scrapes or scratches. There's no spots or lumps or bumps that shouldn't be there. And Grub's quite comfortable with me doing this just now because we've tried to put my ease just by continually stroking them. The next stage is examining the inside of the ear that you can see. There are two parts to the inside of the ear. When we're having a look at the vertical ear canal, again, what we're looking for is any discharge that we can see coming out of that, any smell that may be present, and it's absolutely fine to have a sniff. And again, it's very useful because most often cat's ears may smell, but it's if there is a change in the odour that is coming out. So very often you'll notice that a bit of a musty smell, but if that changes, it does let us know that there may be something else going on within the ear itself. So again, in Grub's case, having a look into that canal, there's nothing abnormal I can see. Some small amount of discharge or waxy material is normal for cats, but again, this boy's got nice clean ears. And without anything further, I would say his ears are in very good condition. If we wanted to have a look deeper, we would get a specialist piece of equipment. Now this is just a brief outline on how to examine ears. If you're looking for any more information or information in a particular condition, we'd redirect you to the Scratching Post website and we can give you more help there.